Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Lucia Doyle. Welcome back. Thank you, Geraldine. You've been here before, and it's great to have you back. Thank you. Thank you for asking me back. <laughs> um, you've had a great faith journey. Tell me your journey of faith. My journey of faith uh, began in 1985. Uh -huh. um, I was exposed to the Word of God, and um, the Word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. It is. And it does divide between soul and spirit. And it was my time and it divided between my soul and mm. spirit. Um, so in, since 1985, um, I thank God that he has girded me, he has strengthened me when I needed strength, he has lifted me up when I needed lifting up. Um, but also I've done my part and that's not to say that, you know, faith is something that we manufacture ourselves yes. um, because the Word of God says by grace are we saved through faith and that faith is not of ourselves, it yes. is God's gift to us. Yeah, and for the, for the audience where, where they haven't experienced it, what, what was your experience of God's love when you, when you had that conversion? My experience was an overwhelming peace, wow. um, a peace that um, I can say truthfully to you today has mm. never been taken away, yeah. uh, not in um, any way that things have happened uh, in the loss of my mother and both my father, really? in natural death. Yeah. I mean, you know, they had a good life. Um, I know that the Lord was with me. Mm. He was saying... Death is a passage from this life to sleep. We sleep and then at some point the Lord Jesus will wake us up yes. or lift us up to meet him in the air. But, but to be of faith is to, our focus is Christ. Yes. Our focus is God, uh, our, our, uh, the one who helps us is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if we're in tune with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, we can't go wrong. It's a winning combination. Yes. For, for those who haven't heard of faith, how do you explain it to someone on the street? Because I know you work with people on the street at times. Well, well faith, and, and I'm sorry if I quote the Bible sometimes, no, faith I'm... is something that you cannot see. Mm. It is... It is um, Believing and hoping in something that you cannot see. see, that you cannot see. You can't, you can't say, uh, you know, I, I have faith in this and I have faith in that. Something's got to be behind it. And it is the supernatural power of, of the God who formed us in our, in our mother's womb. Yes, that's fantastic. What, um, especially parts in the Bible, really helped you when your mum and dad were sick and you said it was quite difficult? Well, knowing, um, knowing that my Redeemer, or yes. the Redeemer that is Christ Jesus, yeah. lives. He, he's, he didn't die and resurrect and then go to sleep or sit at the Father's hand uh, doing nothing. He actually intercedes and pleads for us. Wow. He can see... Um, our hopes, our dreams. He can see our um, uh, when we're when we're sad, when something goes wrong. So he's there for us. He's mm. saying, "Father, this is one of mine. Yes. This is one of mine." And and again, each and every person on the earth can have that experience, mm. because God says that He wishes all men to be saved. And when I say men, I'm not being um, uh, male or female, sorry, person. Um, yeah. person. Uh, men in the Bible, or men, means, means humanity. humanity. Mm -hmm. Means humanity. So um, he wants, you know, he's he's longing for people out there to mm. to know him. Yes. So he's not a, only a God in the Bible. He's an experiential living spirit. He is. He and is. That we, when you pray, you can see movement. 
you can see movement and there have been uh, you know there have been miracles in my own life as I said miracles of healing yes could you tell us one of the miracles um, well you can hear that my voice is deep I've had two thyroid operations um, um, I only function on a little bit of uh, thyroid really? but I praise um, God that I'm not on any medication uh, doctors have said to me, um, I'll, you know, when I've moved or I've been away, they'll say, well, what's your medication? I'll say, I'm not on medication. Wow. And I've never had to have medication. So I have the tiniest little bit of lobe left, but I believe it's the mercy and grace of God underpinning wow. me. Not because I'm more special than anyone else. Yep. Um, we all have our own miracles. We can all have our own experiences with God. Maybe, maybe he knew my what I needed, yeah. you know, we're all different yeah. and we all need different things. Mm. I'm no more special than the other person yes. listening to me. Or yes, I suppose, if, I suppose it's available for everyone who asks. It is available for everyone. Well, again, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive and ask in faith, never doubting, mm. never doubting. Yes, yeah, sometimes people seem to expect God to work, but they. I like that picture once I saw in um, a Christian bookstore where it's Jesus is on one side knocking the door, on the other side there's a door handle on the other side, mm -hmm. and he can't actually open the door. The other person mm -hmm. has to. Yes. Yeah, yes. So I suppose there's the need to receive, isn't yes. it? Yes. You can't just. Um, yes assume that God's going to work if you don't ask. Yes. And it's just the same as in everyday life. If we need something from someone, sometimes we have to ask. People can't read our minds. Yes. And, um, I mean, God gave us our thoughts. God gave us our feelings, our emotions, our needs, our desires. Um, you know, he will fulfill. He wants to. He's yes. there waiting to fulfill mm -hmm. the desires of our heart. We have to learn to ask, though. Yes, it, right. And that's a really good point. Uh, we'll probably go for a break now. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Lucia Doyle. She's been sharing her faith journey. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Lucia, you shared about um, Bible verses that have really helped you in mm. your faith walk. Could yes. you share a bit more yes. about that? Yes. Um, one of my very, very favorite ones is in Job 29, and I can't, uh, no, sorry, 19. Um, and Job has gone through so many things. Um, Suffering but, and all. Yes. But he says, I know, know as in know that my Redeemer Deep. lives mm. and that he shall stand at the latter days upon the earth. And then he talks about our body decomposing. And though wor worms destroy my body, he says, I know that in my flesh, with my spirit, I shall see God. Flesh is the old King James. I love my King James. <laughs> um, so he's talking about though our bodies decay, our spirit will actually see the one who has ransomed us on Calvary. Yes, I love that ransom. Like, um, because people these days, well, <laughs> don't want to pay the price for someone else's um, you know, problems, you know, people say, oh, well, I didn't do it, you know, this whole user pay, you know, user mm -hmm. friend, yes. it's like, if I didn't do it, then I don't, shouldn't pay for it. It's not kind of that general, mm. we, because we're community, we, we all carry the weight. It's more like, mm -hmm. you know, I use the trolley, I put $2 in, but it's not, I'm paying for everyone else. Yes. So it's wonderful about Jesus' ransom for our sins. Could you tell us more mm. about that? Um, he didn't have to. He didn't have to, but God, see, some people will say God can't be, he can't love us. Why would he send his son? Um, he didn't actually force his son. His son um, 
gave himself to the Father's will. He had a choice in it too. Um, but as I said in a previous one, greater love has no, no one than to actually sacrifice or lay themselves down. Mm. But um, in the spiritual sense, there was no other payment. Mm. Uh, to me, it's marvellous that yeah, I Christ... Yes, it's um, significant in the sense of um, that um, in the as was in the time of the Bible of Jesus, that someone had to pay the price of, of the sins of the people. And I think in the past they used the lamb and wrote the lamb, the, yes. their sins on the lamb and sacrificed it so that they would atone their sins. Yes. And so it would be like a, a, a clear white board, you know. Mm. And, but, um, and people don't realize that a lamb is like a Mercedes. It's very expensive. Correct. So when, when a lamb was sacrificed, that was a big sacrifice to human beings. But Jesus became that perfect lamb that has died for all sins forever. So that's powerful, yes. isn't it? The lamb without blemish. Yeah, and that yes. we can claim that. Yes. So that, that's really significant. How do you reach that to young people? Because I know you have a heart for young people. Well, the love of God constrains me that I need to be uh, at work. Um, it's, part of, it's part of who I am in Christ. If he's given me a second chance, um, when I interact with people, young people, I, I, I have a real heart for young people. Mm. So when I interact with them, if they're distressed in, in the work I do or if I've met someone on the, on the street and I can see they're suffering, um, my heart goes out to them and in some way I have to give them voice so that they get their second chance as well. Mm. How do you, I mean, how do you cope with the, you know, like people with drugs, people who, who um, actually have made bad decisions and some people would say, oh, just let them go. They, you know, they're on alcohol, they're on drugs. They could, they could have had such a good life, but they chose to be addicted. How, mm. how, do, you, how do you love those sort of people? Well, how do we love them um, as God loved us first? Yeah. Um, but that, I don't want that to sound airy-fairy. Um, the manifestation is that I am prepared to listen. I am prepared to do something to help them. If I point them in the right direction, you know, if I get some sort of help for them, obviously, you know, I don't have all the, the knowledge of the different um, things resources. they might need, legal yeah. or, yes, all the resources but I can actually point them and begin them on their journey. Mm. Um, some come back to me and we have a little relationship for a while. Some don't, but I don't need any sort of thanks. Mm. Uh, the thanks I get is knowing that I have alleviated and relieved the, the, the pain and heartache of someone, mm. even for that 10 minutes where they've spoken to me mm. and I've allowed them to talk to me, yeah. that I've been willing and able to listen. Yes, I now and then I talk to the homeless, you know, down at Flinders Street or around, mm. and um, I, I, I do need to brace myself and say, Holy Spirit, come, because yes. sometimes you can get some swear words or sometimes you can get a bit of rejection, you know, like, because they don't, you know, they think, oh, this do-gooder, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I like to what, um, I have some friends who are in the missionaries of God's love, who are kind of a religious order of seminarians, priests. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, when they worked in um, Sydney, they used to um, bring out the people on the street to have, instead of giving them money, they used to spend give them a meal or spend time with them at McDonald's or something like yes. that. And I thought to myself, I will give it a go. And, and I've been doing that, you know, now and then. And, and it's been quite interesting. I spent um, a, two, three hours with this guy who had a mental illness and he was stabbed mm. and he showed me his wounds and, and he showed, shared with me his story. And I felt privileged to be part of that time and also to bless him with, with my time and money and also and some some contacts, you know, too. Yes. And it was like, um, but initially it was hard. Like you said, you need the Holy Spirit mm. and you need it's, to call on God. Yeah. It's never easy to pull ourselves out of our comfort zone. We've got to, and, and it's so wonderful when we get rejection because it actually teaches us what is this person feeling. Mm. 
you know, I can now begin to appreciate why this person is in the unfortunate position that they are in. Mm. And so, yes, um, the prayer and the covering of the Holy Spirit is always. Yes. And and we, we need to understand as Christians mm. that we don't always wrestle with flesh and blood, yes. but with principalities and powers uh, yeah. that we can't control. Mm. Interesting point, and we'll hear more about it after the break. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Lucia Doyle. She's been sharing her faith journey. Welcome back, Thanks. Lucia. You were sharing about the principalities of darkness and mm. in the world. What, could you explain more about that? Well, the principalities and powers that the Bible talks about are the wicked hosts. They're the fallen angels, mm. and they're allowed to... Um, roam the earth and attack um, and uh, denigrate what um, human beings are meant to be. Human beings are made in the likeness and the image of God um, and the, the, the wicked hosts are here to hinder us. All oh, right, so it, it's kind of like an unhealthy negative. It's not to bring God's design and love into the world. Correct, correct. Uh, and so... Um, I just sometimes um, I find it hard to understand um, with all the religions in the world uh, and each person has the right to believe what they want to and, um, uh, and, and have faith in what they want to. But sometimes um, dabbling in spiritual things, if, if we, are, we are spirit beings, after we're born again, we have the spirit of God and we are spirit, spiritual. So we need to understand that um, sometimes if we get involved in spiritual practices, the occult or witchcraft or something like that, we are actually opening ourselves to um, the I call them spiritual hosts of wickedness. Mm. Um, so when a person gives that intro into their life, it's like saying to someone, uh, yes, I'll have a drink of beer with you or whatever it is the person's asking you to. So we give permission. If we give permission to that wicked host to come into, that can actually change us, mm. uh, not for the better sometimes. So it's quite dangerous to our human uh, life mm. but also to very dangerous to our spiritual life yeah i um did meet someone who who told me a story where their friend um where they had a problem their family were sick and and um and they said to their friend uh, i'm praying to god for my parents that who are sick you know my relatives who are sick and the other ladies a young person said uh who do you pray to and and my friend said god of course and and then this lady said, no, no, I pray to the devil, so he gives me everything I want. And, and my friend got a bit freaked out with that mm. because, um, mm. because I do know some people who do pray to the devil, who, who, who become very successful, but more in a materialistic, you know, that sort of, you know, like, you know, devouring power. Not for good, but, you know. That's correct. Mm. Well, he's the prince of this world, so he's going to reward people with the things of, of this world, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's debauchery, whether it's um, mm. uh, houses, um, whatever, they, whatever a person asks for. If you align yourself with the wrong power, I call mm. it, um, then, you know, you need, to, you need to understand what you're letting yourself yes. in for. Yeah, I hate to say it, but there was a time in my life because of depression, I, I went the other way and I, because I was like angry with God because I wanted... A miracle to happen and I wanted to be in a relationship and 
because God didn't give it to me. I went to the evil, and mm. unfortunately, what I asked for came about, but it sent me on a very dark, mm. depressing path. But mm. I thank God that His mercy never comes to an end. I thought because I went the wrong way that you know, thunder would go on me and kill me or something, but instead I experienced God's mm. mercy and love. Mm. And, and I'm seeing that. <laughs> I see the, the mercy and grace of God mm. evident in your life. <laughs> thank you. Geraldine. Yes, yeah, so you, with your um, work, do you find that it, uh, it's a, that, that it's sometimes there's that uncomfortable feeling about working with people who are not as, you know, like maybe who are drunk or on drugs and maybe on the street where there's smell and dirt? Do you find that uncomfortable at times? Um, I can't say that the physical is uncomfortable. Mm. However, I have to arm myself in the spirit mm. to make sure that... Um, um, that I'm okay, mm. uh, and so I trust in in God. I trust that the Holy Spirit will um, keep me safe, mm. and I just I'm the hands and feet mm. of yeah. Christ. I yeah. have to. I, I I can't do less. Yes, you have a lot of courage. <laughs> well, I guess so. Yes, yes, and I suppose that's what love is. Sometimes you have to do it afraid, and you know that. Um, I always remember. Uh, some person I used to work with, an elderly lady, and she said, if only someone would talk to me on the train, I'm so lonely. Mm. And sometimes when I see people on the train, I see them so lonely, I strike a conversation with them. And some of them think I'm weird, but I sort of just think of her and I just think I will meet some lonely person who just wants mm -hmm. someone to smile at them. And, yes. and I've made quite a few friends and people have kept in touch. So I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I, I always wanted to make a difference and I, and I can see you are. Well, I try. I try, <laughs> and I hope that I'm being obedient to the call that's been placed on my on my life. Yes, um, you've talked about a lot, but I, I'm, you've got such a heart. Would you like to say a prayer for the audience or, or anyone who's open to that? Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, yes, loving Heavenly Father, I just thank you for our audience. I thank you, Lord, for whatever it is that they're going through. I just ask, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would touch someone, you would touch them, that you would let them know that you are real, that you are a loving Father, even though they haven't experienced a loving Father or a loving family, that you love them uh, above and beyond any human love that they could ever feel. And I thank you, Lord, um, Father God, for your son, Jesus, who paid the price, the ransom of his life's blood upon the cross of Calvary and by his stripes that, that he was beaten with, we are healed. I thank you, God, and I praise you in the name of Jesus, your son. Oh, that was a beautiful prayer. And, um, and it's been great having you and that it's a great news to know that Jesus can be a friend to everyone. And, um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for having me. Thank yeah. you. And, that, and I hope the audience also knows that they can receive this and say tonight, you know, in their prayer time, say, I want that. I want yes. that love. Yes. And wish you all the best. Goodbye. And God bless you. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Goodbye and God bless you. Bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow, blow, blow till I be not breath of the spirit.